Hi, and welcome to the channel. I'm JJ Atkins. I'm a digital artist working with Procreate to produce some kind of pop culture content type art that I post online. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram, but I also post some tutorial videos or just some general videos about whatever occurs to me at the time here on YouTube. If, you, if you're new here, just take a moment and click on the subscribe button. It helps me out a lot, and of course I would love it if you left a comment and let me know if you'd like to see anything in the future or any other suggestions for the videos that you may have. So let's talk about this picture of Mario. This was inspired by the hashtag six fan arts challenge going through Instagram right now. Uh, you post six blank boxes and your followers make some suggestions of fan art to draw. And we're gonna be taking a look, as I mentioned before, Mario. So let's start by talking a little bit about the concept that I wanted to go for here. Right from the get go, I knew as I was gonna be drawing these six different pieces of fan art that I was going for a little bit more of an illustration. So it wasn't just gonna be the character, I wanted to tell at least a little bit of a narrative in, in the image that I was putting up there. Um, so the first idea that kind of occurred to me was this this gag that I, I, I could swear it has been done before, but when I kind of Googled it and went looking for it, I didn't really see any real examples of this gag where Mario's hit his head, you know, from busting through those blocks and, and has a lump on his head as a result. So not really seeing it anywhere, I thought, what the heck, I'd tackle it, and, and that's kind of the idea that I had, at least loosely. Now, how does that work in a composition? I'm not sure yet. So I knew from the get-go I wanted to draw Mario sitting down, bump on his head, but then I needed to get some other elements in there, the, the elements that kind of explain what he hit his head on and what sort of a world he was kind of operating in. Now, that should be fairly obvious. He exists within the world of his Mario Brothers video games, so that was obviously the background that I was gonna be drawing, but what elements, you know, uh, uh, what block? Do I include the coins? Do I include any of the mushrooms? And these were, were kind of the questions. Now, um, putting this together, was relatively easy. There's a lot of reference out there and I probably had about 12 different pictures up giving me various elements of the game that I could use as, as kind of an inspiration and reference for the drawing that I was making. But the funny thing about it was is that it was all very pixelated because it came from still images of the game. But it occurred to me that this was kind of a unique way that I could go with this drawing. And you're starting to see some evidence of it right now as I lay in some of the ink uh, uh, final inks on these drawings is that I wanted to go with this video game look but without necessarily pixelating everything. So I didn't want to draw a bunch of tiny little squares for pixels but I did want this to be very reminiscent of that video game feel and so what I did was I did a lot of copy and paste using the copy and paste feature of Procreate. So you can see some evidence of it in the grass line uh, at the bottom of the page there. That grass line is basically just a little bit of a uh, angled kind of set of uh, uh, grass blades so to speak that I drew but then kind of cut it off after about an inch or so and then copy it and paste it to get a repetitious pattern again reminiscent of what you would see in these Mario Brother video games. It's a little bit more obvious in the brick pattern and the blocks, but I, it kind of got inspired by it starting with drawing in those grass uh, areas down below. A couple of the other elements that are very reminiscent of the series, um, so I had the question mark block, there's a coin, and of course our uh, pipe. Now the pipe, I didn't want to just sit by itself, so I decided to have one of those uh, kind of Venus flytrap looking creatures come out of it. And to be honest, I struggled with this one. I couldn't get the angle on it quite right, and this is where those reference photos really kind of help out. You'll see me kind of try this over and over and over again, but what I kind of figured out through a lot of trial and error is that I was trying to be too exact about it. I was drawing, I was trying to draw exact circles and then drawing exact angles coming off the circles to get this as precise as I could. Because again, that was the point, right? It's a very precise drawing coming from a at least inspired by a video games. So every line had to be perfect here to, to kind of invoke that, that representation of kind of like that two dimensional video game surface. But as try as I might, I can never really get it to work because I really wanted to get that, that plant to look three dimensional to mod, match up with some of the other elements that I was drawing. So there's, this is a really kind of weird mix and match. The pipe is kind of two dimensional, although when I color it and get some light in there, it'll look a little bit more 3D. Uh, the blocks can tend to kind of look the same way, but I knew when I was getting into coloring, I'd try to use some light and shadow tricks to make it look at least slightly three dimensional. And so I felt like I had to kind of get that in the drawing of the uh, fly trap as well. So once I started getting somewhat happy with, with the way the, uh, the angle of the face if you want to call it that was looking, then it was you know relatively easy at that point to kind of draw on some of these other elements. Now, I may make mention of this in a lot of my videos, but I think it really kind of makes sense here to talk about it, layers. 
when it comes to this line drawing, you're gonna find that everything is on its own separate layers. The pipe is on its own layer, the plant is on its own layer, that kind of grassy area down below is uh, also on its own layer, the individual block, the uh, block with all the bricks uh, also on its own layer, the coin, we're gonna put in some bushes using that repetition copy and paste effect, the clouds, everything on its own separate layer. So I can make everything disappear at will, bring it back, and it makes the layering and the composition a little bit easier. Because at this point, I know the elements that I wanna put in this, I just don't know where I wanna arrange them on the page yet. And since every element, every object is on its own separate layer, I've suddenly got a lot of freedom once I get that line work done and in a place where I like it, to be able to just kind of puzzle piece it together, move things around on the page to decide where I want it. And really that's kind of an important thing in this particular one because I don't exactly know what I want it fully formed in my head yet. That's unusual for me. I usually have a pretty good idea in my head from the get-go, at least in terms of composition. So this one was something I had to experiment with. And when it comes to composition, you know, there are some kind of rules and guidelines you can go by, but nothing is a steadfast rule. And I would challenge that if you did say that there was such a thing as an art rule, then art rules are made to be broken and just about all of them can be broken successfully if you apply, you know, the right technique. So did I break the rules here? Maybe. Uh, I, I didn't really can subscribe to one third rule or focus in the middle or anything like that. I just kind of took all the elements and put them around the page in a similar way that I'm used to seeing in the video game. And ultimately when I felt like things were relatively balanced from one side to the other, I called it a day and said that's at least good enough. Um, I'm happy with it. I think it still tells the narrative here that, that he's bumped his head on the block that's above him, so all the elements do kind of work together. And once I get all the coloring in and all the shadow and the light, I think that, 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 that you know, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the final result because I wanted to go video game-esque but still at least get some three-dimensionality into it. So at this point, everything is still on its own layer, and that makes the coloring a lot easier, too. I can really just very quickly put in these mid-tones by doing color fills uh, after I make copies of the line work. So that's kind of how I work. I have my final inks that I'll duplicate. So for instance, Mario is on his own layer, but all of his line work is then duplicated. So I have one layer that sits kind of as a backup if I ever need it again later. And then the other line arc, line art layer gets locked and put uh, kind of at the top with all the colors fed in underneath of it. So the line art always stays on top and gives it that kind of cartoony feel. Once I get the midtones in, now you can see that I'm working on uh, the coloring and the lighting. And the, and the pipe here is a really good example of how I go about that. So it's a nice little stripe of uh, darkness in there. And that's uh, kind of smudged a little bit to give it a sense that it's round. And then a similar effect is pulled off of the light. The light was a little bit bright on this. So once I kind of smudged and got it where I wanted, I then lowered the opacity to make it look a little bit more natural and then just left it as is. A lot of time I, I, I like to go back and kind of color in some of my line work and you'll see me do that here. I'll do some recoloring and some touch-ups a little bit later on. But for the most part, I think you're going to find that because I was going for this video game look, the big bold outlines didn't really bother me this time and for the most part I'd left them intact. So there really isn't a whole lot more to talk about here. All the shadows really and, and lights are, are really kind of working in the same vein as what I've done with the plant here. The thing about it is, is that I just do it layer by layer. So once the pipe and the plant are done, then I'll work on some other layer and repeat the process all over again with shadow and light until I've worked on every layer uh, or every element, every object, if you will, and gotten this to the point where I think that it's, you know, uh, I'm satisfied with the end result. And I will keep continue to tweak. One of the things that I might suggest, uh, uh, at least as a method that works for me, is that when I think I'm done, don't assume. So if I do think I'm done, I'll walk away from it. Sometimes for an hour, sometimes until the next day, and then come back at it and take a look again and see if it still needs some touch up. That ability to kind of walk away from it is really helpful to me because when I work on these things, I go at them for several hours at a time, and you can kind of get kind of lost in, in the detail or, or even the lack of detail if you spend too long staring at something. Now, I recommend that for you, but honestly, it's just something that works for me. Your mileage may vary. But the point of the matter here is that when I walk away and come back to it, I often notice things that I didn't notice before because I was staring at it for so long that you kind of miss the forest for the trees. So I, I found it to be a pretty good method, and that's something I did employ here. Um, I actually let this sit for about two days. I, I worked on another drawing, got another video together, and I'm just coming back to it today, taking a look at it, decided to do a little bit of touch up here and there, and then ultimately publish the video on it. Um, there's not much else to kind of say here in terms of the drawing, so I will move on to another topic here where we just talk about a little bit the love for Mario. 
I, I don't think I could get through this entire movie without talking about what a huge influence Mario has had on my life. I'm not the biggest video gamer in the world, but I did have a Nintendo when I was a kid. I have a PlayStation today. I can't wait for the new PlayStation to come out in a few months. And Mario was obviously one of my favorite games. Um, Nintendo was a big mainstay in my life as well, so I played a lot of the Mario games over the years, so it was really kind of fun to do this piece. Although, again, I just want to stress that this wasn't a unique idea that I had on my own. This was recommended by a follower of mine on Instagram by the name of Tiffany. Uh, Tiffany also runs her own channel, Tiffany's Fine Art, where she does a lot of painting, mostly uh, in oils, uh, a little bit in acrylic as well. I'm really a big fan of her art, so I'm going to put a link to her channel down below in the description. Go check her out, and more importantly, give her a subscribe. We can all use all the help we can get when it comes to this whole YouTube channel thing, especially a starving artist trapped inside the house under pandemic conditions. So, that's about all I have to say about this one. You can see here that it's mostly kind of come together, and we're kind of at the end point here. Um, I'm just going to finish up the touch-up work, get rid of my little palette that kind of sits up there at the top, and we'll call this a finished piece. Now, as I said before, this is part of the hashtag six fan arts challenge. So this is going to be piece number three of six. I've already worked on one that was Beauty and the Beast and uh, another one that was Stitch. So we got the kind of Disney element out of the way. I'll have another video coming soon where we're going to work on another pseudo Disney character, Winnie the Pooh. I'm going to stress the idea here, though, is that I'm not going to be going Disney on this one. I'm going to do something that's a little bit more reminiscent of the original illustrations in the uh, children's books by A.A. A. Milne. So if that's something that's interesting to you, keep an eye on the channel. I'll have that published uh, fairly soon. Most of it's already, actually already done. And uh, other than that, I'll take one last moment to uh, shamelessly plug the channel again and ask you to click on that subscribe button. If you want to click on the bell, that'll give you notifications when I post new videos. And I will always welcome any comment that you may have about any questions or suggestions for future videos. I appreciate everybody out there. Uh, take care, and I hope to see you again soon.